Alright, today we are talking about 2-2, which is linear functions, excuse me, linear relations and functions. So, there's a lot to talk about today, but you already know it from Algebra 1. We're just going to get into a little bit deeper. So with this, we're going to start with a linear equation. Before even reading any of this, when you hear the word linear, what do you think? You think of a line, right? So linear equation is an equation for a line. So there's some specific rules that it has to follow in order to to fit in a linear equation. So here's some things that you need to know. No operations other than addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of a variable by a constant. So let's remember what a variable is. A variable is a letter, right? And a constant is a number. So variable is like x, constant is like a 2. No variables can be multiplied together. So for example, you can't have that happen, okay? and no variables in the denominator. And what's a denominator? The bottom of a fraction, right? So you couldn't have like 1 over 2x or something like that. And the reason you can't have 1 over 2x is because another rule is you can't have um, a negative exponent because this is essentially the same rule. Because if you have 1 over x, isn't that the same as x to the negative 1? So when they say no variables in the denominator, that's the same as no negative exponent. Same rule, okay? Uh, no variables with exponents other than 1, so you can't have like y equals x squared because that's no longer a line, right? And the graph is always a line, which could be forced to fit into the y equals mx plus b form, all right? So we'll talk about that more later. A linear function, f of x equals mx plus b. Remember, f of x is just meaning a function and it replaces your y. Standard form is a different way to write it other than slope-intercept form or point-slope form. It's just a different format. So standard form has ax plus by equals c. What that means is you have the x and the y um, on one side of the equation. Typically, we put it on the left. So you have x and y on the left side with the constant on the right side. And then there's some rules you have to follow with that. A, B, and C must be integers, which we've already talked about, right? So it can't be a fraction or a decimal or something like that. An integer is like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, da, da, da. GCF, greatest common factor of A, B, and C must be a 1. So for example, if I had 2x plus 4y equals 8, that's not in standard form right now. We'd have to do something to make the GCF, which here is obviously a 2, go away. All right, and then a has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means a must be positive. If it's greater than or equal to zero, that's saying it's a positive, right? So you can't have negative in front of the x. It needs to be positive. Another um, thing we need to talk about is x and y intercepts. Your x intercept is, usually we start with x, so your x intercept is where the graph crosses the x axis and your y intercept is where the graph crosses the y axis. So in order to find that algebraically, something that I always say is to find x, set y equal to what? Zero. To find y, set x equal to zero. Algebraically, we can do that, okay? Graphically, it's where it crosses the axis. All right, state whether each equation is a linear function. Explain, or circle, or something. Tell me why it's not, if it's not. If it's a linear function, it has to follow these rules, where these things don't happen, okay? So with this first one, 3 x, excuse me, 3y minus 4x equals 20. Do we have any operations other than addition, subtraction, multiplication, division? So like, do we have a square root or a cubed root or absolute values or something weird, right? No, so that's a check. We're good there. Uh, do we have any variables multiplied together, like an x times a y? No, so that's good. Do we have any letters in the denominator? No, we don't even have a denominator. Do we have any letters or variables with an exponent other than 1? Nope, those are both ones. They're understood ones. And then the graph, does it look like we could put it in slope-intercept form if we wanted to? Yeah. So this, is an, uh, this equation is a linear function. So you can just say yes. Easy as that. 17, y equals x squared minus 6. Let's go over again. Is there anything other than addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? No. Are any variables multiplied together? No. Any denominators at all? No. Any variables with exponents other than 1? 
Yes. Right? We cannot have that. So because that happened, it is not a line, it is not a linear function, and the reason is because of that x squared. Okay? This next one. Do we have any operations other than addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, blah, blah, blah. You go through the checklist. Take just a second and see if this is yes, a linear function, or no. What do you think? Yes or no? It's no, but why? Right there. You cannot have a variable in the denominator because that's really a negative exponent. It's the same thing. So this one is a no. Okay? If you're confused, pause, write it down, ask me tomorrow, whatever you got to do. Write each equation in standard form. Identify A, B, and C. So if you go back up again, standard form is right here with these rules. Okay? So let's start with making it look that way. I'm going to write it down here so I don't have to keep scrolling up ax plus by equals c, okay? I need x and y on the left-hand side with the constant on the right. So right now, this 6 is in the way. How do you remove the 6 or move it over or whatever you want to call that? Subtract 6 from both sides, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put the x in the front. So it's negative 3x plus 10y equals what? 5, right? Okay? So now it looks like this. But we have to make sure we follow all the rules. A, B, and C must be integers. Okay, I don't see any fractions or decimals. We're good. The GCF must be a 1. Well, 3, 10, and 5, the GCF is 1. So that's good. And then A must be greater than or equal to 0. So positive. This is not a positive. What can I do to the entire equation to make this be positive? You could multiply by negative 1, you could divide by negative 1, whatever works for you, change all the signs. As long as you do it to both sides of the equation, you're fine. You're not really changing the problem, you're just changing the way it looks. So this now becomes 3x minus 10y equals negative 5. So now, does this follow all the rules? Yeah. So this is in standard form right here, and then they said identify a, b, and c. So they want to know that a is the coefficient on x. So a is 3, b is what? Negative 10, and c is, oh, whoa, <laughs> c is negative 5. Okay? Super easy, right? This one, obviously, the idea is the same, but it gets a little bit messier just because there's fractions, but big deal, you're going to be fine. Okay? So first, let's go ahead and make sure x and y are on the the left side, okay? I can move the 1 8 in front, but we can deal with that later. So the next thing is that they must be integers, and they're not, right? These fractions are not integers. So how do I get rid of just the 5? Because that's annoying, right? Well, I'd multiply this by 5, wouldn't I? But really, if I multiply anything by 5, I have to multiply it all by 5. But let's not just stop there. How would I get rid of this fraction? Multiply by what? 8. So instead of multiplying everything by 5 and then again by 8, couldn't I just multiply it all by 40, right? If I multiply everything by 40, my fractions are going to disappear, okay? So I multiply this by 40 over 1 and this by 40 over 1 and this by 40, then I'm doing the same thing everywhere and my fractions are going to go away. If you really have to use a calculator, that's fine, but how many times does 5 go into 40 for just this part? eight times, right? So we've, we're left with eight times four, which is 32y, okay? How many times does eight go into 40? Five times. Well, five times one is five, so x, just five x. And then four times 40, well, four times four is 16 with another zero in there, okay? Technically, the x should come in the front, so five x plus 32y equals 160, right? Is this in standard form? A, x, y equal constant, x, y equal constant, a, b, and c are integers, no fractions, no decimals, gcf is a 1, and then this is positive. So we're good. So what's a? 5, what's b? 32, and what's c? 160. Super easy. Don't let fractions freak you out. You're going to be fine. Okay? 
find the x and y intercepts and then graph the thing. So sometimes you graph using slope intercepts, sometimes you do point intercept. This time they want you to graph using x and y intercepts. Super, super easy. If you want to find the x intercept, you set y equal to zero. If you want to find the y intercept, you set x equal to zero. So I typically always do it the same way. If I want to find x, I set y equal to zero. So I'm setting y equal to zero. I'm substituting zero in for y. And then you solve this. This is an easy algebra one problem, right? So I'm going to add the four to both sides. Divide by negative eight. So x is negative one half and that's okay. In algebra two, it is not always going to be pretty, okay? It's not always going to be an easy number for you. X equals negative one half is true. You're right. You did nothing wrong and we'll just graph it in a minute. So let's go ahead and find our y-intercept. To find y, you set x equal to zero, right? So you can do it this way, or I'll show you something else for those of you that are visual. It's hard for me to do on here, but I'll try. So let's go ahead and do it the algebraic way. So that's zero minus four, which is obviously negative four. My x-intercept is negative one-half and my y-intercept is negative four. If you're struggling with the algebra, if you're trying to find x and you set y equal to zero or trying to find y and you set x equal to zero, put your hand, and let's do the um, trying to find y so we set x equal to zero. Literally, cover up whatever x is touching right here. You are going to cover that up with your hand, right? And you're just left with y equals negative four. Bam, right? So if you just covered it up with your hand, that's, for some people, a little bit easier, but that's up to you. So on the x-axis, I'm going to go to negative one-half. So obviously, this is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. You should know that by now, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and put some tick marks on here. Um, if this is negative one, then negative one-half is right here. It crosses my x-axis at negative one-half. My y-intercept is negative four. So go down four, and there's my y-intercept. You only need two, whoopsie, make that prettier. You only need two dots to make a line, right? Two ordered pairs. So here's what I don't ever want you to do. This is not an ordered pair together. If you ever wanted it to write it that way, negative one half is your x. What was our y for that? It was zero, right? Four, excuse me, negative four was our y. What was our x? Zero. These are two completely different ordered pairs. They don't go together. It is not an x comma y here. You found x when y was zero. You found y when x was zero. So you don't ever go to negative one half, negative four, because first of all, it's only one ordered pair. You can't even make a line. And second of all, it's just not right. Okay? On this next one, same thing. To find x, you set y to zero. To find y, you set x to zero. So I'm going to rewrite it so I can show you what I mean when I say covering things up. I'm going to do it the proper way first, and then some people don't get that, and then I'll show you the shortcut, I guess. To find x, you set y to zero. And you solve that, right? It's hard to look at my negatives on here. Sorry about that. So that's zero equals negative 42. So then that's obviously 6x equals negative 42. Divide both sides by 6. So x is negative 7. Okay? If I were you, so you don't accidentally do what I said before, I would go ahead and graph that now. Go ahead and go to negative 7 on your x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put a dot. And then we can do our y. If you wanted to do the covering up thing, you find x cover up y and see how you go straight to this step. You kind of skip a few steps, all right? So now, to find y, you set x to zero. Okay, so that's negative four y plus zero, I'm not gonna write that, equals negative 42. Divide both sides by negative four. So y is two negatives make a positive. Um, you could go ahead and reduce that and just make it negative 21 over two. Oh, nope, two negatives make positive. Just kidding, positive 21 over 2, which is what I said anyway. But And then um, that's hard to graph, right? So that's really 10 and a half, okay? So on the y-axis, I'm going to go up 10 and a half the best I can. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and a half. I'm up a bit high, but that's okay. Hopefully yours doesn't run together. Um, I already lost it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and a half. So like here-ish, right? And you connect your dots. Oh my, make yours cross each other, right? So that's our, that's our graph, that's our line, okay? 
backside. This is going to be a story problem. All of this um, goes together, okay? Don't be intimidated by story problems. It's going to be fine. You read it once just to kind of get an idea of what they're talking about. You read it a second time slower and point out the important information. And then even a third time if you need to to make sure that you answered it correctly, okay? So here we go. LaTanya earns a commission of $1.75 for each magazine subscription that she sells and $1.50 for each newspaper subscription that she sells. Her goal is to earn a total of $525 in commission in the next two weeks. I'm going to read it one more time. Okay, so something about magazines, something about newspapers, she's getting some money, right? I'm going to read it slower. She gets $1.75 for each magazine, well that seems important to me, and $1.50 for each newspaper, okay? And then she wants that much total in two weeks. So those all look pretty important. So now I'm going to actually read the question. Write an equation that's a model for the different numbers of magazines and newspaper subscriptions that can be sold to meet the goal. So whenever you do this, you have to tell me what these things stand for. So like if you're going to say M for magazine and N for newspaper, you have to say M equals number of magazines sold, N equals number of newspapers sold, okay? Um, if you're going to call it X, call it Y, whatever you want. I'm going to use X and Y. X equals number of magazines sold. The more specific you are, the better your chances are of doing I-step or whatever kind of test we have right now. Um, you need to be super specific, okay? And then I'm going to call Y is the number of newspapers sold. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm calling it X and Y because later I'm going to have to graph it, so that'll be helpful to me. So because of that, if it's $1.75 per magazine, in math what that means is times. $1.75 for each magazine. And $1.50, if you want to put the zero, you can, for each newspaper for a total of $525. If you really actually read the problem and look at what we wrote, that's what they said. They just used some words, right? Graph the equation. Does it represent a function? So because we're focusing on x and y intercepts right now, I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. Again, you can always graph it any way you want to unless it specifies, but because today's x and y intercepts, let's do it that way. To find x, you set y equal to 0. So I don't even need to write that, right? Because it's going to be 0. Divide by $1.75 on each side, and what's x? 300. Okay. To find y, you set x equal to 0. So I don't even need to write that. So $1.50y equals $525. Divide by $1.50 on both sides. And what's y? Plug it in. <laughs> 350. Good. All right. It says graph the thing. So I'm going to, if you go by anything but 1s, you need to make sure you put that on your graph. So I'm going to go by 100. Okay, that's 100, and I'm also going to go by 100 up here. You don't have to label everything, just as long as I know that's um, what you're going to go by, that's fine. So the x-axis, I need to go to 300, which is three tick marks to the right. And on the y-axis, I need to go to 350, which is obviously in between the 3 and the 4. So 1, 2, 3, right here. Connect your dots, hopefully better than I do, typically. And that is our graph. Okay, the next question, does it represent a function? Is this a function? Well, yeah, it passes the vertical line test, right? What kind of a function is it? It's a linear function because it's a line, okay? So, yes, it's a function. Even though they didn't ask, it is a linear function. Well, they said explain, so that works. All right, last part of it. If LaTanya sells 100 magazine subscriptions and 200 newspaper subscriptions, is she going to meet her goal? explain, right? There's multiple ways to do this. Some people are guessing checkers. Some people like the equation. Some people want to look at the graph and see if it works. So if you think about it, I'm going to start with um, algebra because I think that's, for most people, the easiest way to do it. And then I'll show you some other options later if you need it, okay? So if it's 100 magazines, let's go back to our original equation. 175x plus 1.5y equals 525, right? We called magazine x so I'm going to replace X with 100. And we called newspaper Y, so I'm going to replace Y with 200. 
Is she going to meet her goal? Is she going to reach $525? Well, I don't know. So I'm putting a question mark because I don't know. I don't like an equal sign unless it's really equal. So let's do our math. What do you get on the left side? 475 and then we still have the 525. Are those equal? No. Did she make enough or was she short? She was short, right? So no, she will not meet her goal because $475 is not 525. It's too small. It's less than. So no, she didn't meet her goal. If you are confused or you need help or you want to see a different way of looking at it, uh, you just let me know. So for example, really quickly, we could look at the ordered pair 100, 200, 100, 200, which is here. Anything on this line or above means she met her goal. Don't actually shade it in because that's a whole different thing. But anything on this line or above means she met her goal. She made that goal or higher. This is obviously not at the line. If you weren't sure, I would do the math anyway, but this is very clearly 100 comma 200 is below that line. So she did not make the goal because she didn't hit the line or higher. So just things like that. If you ever want to see, just let me know if the original way I showed you isn't good enough. Okay.